It was, uh, it was 1984. I was five years old. This is in Annapolis, Maryland, East Coast, right on the lip of the Chesapeake Bay. I'm at my grandmother's house. My grandmother's house was a two-story, railroad-style, falling apart, just it, almost a shanty house. The wood was rotting. The floors were wood and cracked. It was cold. This was winter. My parents were not yet divorced, and they had just had my little brother, who was two, and they were in between homes, so we had to stay at Grandma's. Now, there's not a lot of rooms in this house. Grandma has her room. There's a, a bedroom for my, my aunts. And downstairs, there's a living room and a kitchen. And so, my family, we stayed downstairs. All huddled on the floor. Maybe somebody gets a couch. That's about it. Times were tough. And I remember there being, this is one of my earliest memories, things were dour. Things were, my parents were on, just on the edge of a divorce. The financial strains were too much. And so everything about the situation was bleak. Grandma used to stay up as long as she could to be with the family downstairs. And I'd hear the grown-ups talking. And I'm a little kid, I, I, I can't make out much of what they're saying, but the conversations are tense. But at the end of the night, Grandma would try to calm everybody down and kind of drive the conversation towards her memories. She'd tell stories to kind of simmer things down before everybody went to bed. And I remember this very, very clearly because it's not the kind of thing a, a little boy forgets. They were trading stories back and forth and they were talking about my grandma and how when she was born she was born this happens to kids every now and again uh, when they're born they're born with a, uh, a, mem oh. uh, a yeah, membrane over their face I got to cut it away it's very it's common you just cut it away and it's, everything's fine <clears throat> but she remembers she says she claims that she remembers what how the world looked through that now that seems very implausible and unlikely that you would remember what the world would look like through a membrane when you're freshly born. But she says, I remember what the world looked like through that for the few seconds it was on my face and every now and again I see a shadow pass over a wall where there ought not be a shadow and it has the same hue and texture as my visions when I had the membrane over my eyes. And five days after I see a shadow like that, somebody in the family dies. She was telling spooky grandma stories and it worked. <laughs> Things would happen in that house. There'd be noises. My grandpa was alive at that time while we were living there. And it just so happened that my grandma saw one of these shadows one day. And wouldn't you know it, five days later, grandpa dies while we're living there. Well, I don't remember the funeral. I was just a little kid. I was babysat all day long in that house. So I'm sure they took care of business the way they needed to, but when all was said and done, we were there for a few more months. And I remember one night after everything had calmed down, after the death, after the funeral, after grandma's creepy vision 
This is a lot for a little kid to take in. You gotta understand. There'd be, at midnight, knocks on the upstairs doors. Like I said, it was, it was just a shitty house. Not a lot of room. Not a lot of doors for there to be knocking on. But at midnight, there would be knocking on doors while everybody was asleep. We all wake up. What was that? Grandma, you okay up there? Yeah, I heard it. I, there's nobody here. For the duration of our stay at midnight, there were knocks on the doors upstairs. It got to the point where Grandma came downstairs and slept with us. There was no explaining it. She couldn't handle it. We don't blame her. Yeah, Grandma, please, yeah, come down here with us. I remember just towards the end of that stay, as we're making plans to go back to Texas, I had fallen asleep, and Grandpa, remember freshly dead Grandpa, had had his chair, as a Grandpa does. Grandpa has a chair, and nobody sits in that chair. That's Grandpa's chair. Well, like I said, we slept in the living room, and that chair's there. And I'm on the floor with my little brother on a blanket. That's where I slept, or that's where we slept, with my head right next to that chair. And I remember very clearly, it's one of my first most vivid memories. As I was falling asleep, and everybody else was asleep, I was always the last to fall asleep. I was just starting to get my eyes closed when I heard a rocking. I look up at the chair, and there's my grandpa rocking in a chair, his glasses, and his red flannel, and his gray buzz cut. And he looks at me, and I look at him. And I, comp I immediately turned my face away. Because I was five, but I knew what death was. Grandpa's not supposed to be in that chair. And I'm petrified. I don't have the strength to even yell, Mom, wake up, Grandpa's in the chair. And so, with clenched teeth and tensed muscles, I did everything... I could to just concentrate on not looking at the rocking chair and I hear it back and forth. And then it stopped. And I slowly turned back around to look. And of course, the chair is empty. And I turned back around. And I see my mother's face, and her eyes are wide open. Like saucers. And I said, Mom, did you see Grandpa? And she said, go to sleep. And so I did. And the next day... I don't know what kind of conversation my parents had, but we got in the car and we went to Texas. Ahead of schedule. <laughs> so, that's a creepy thing that happened that I could bring to the table. So, uh, you know, there you go. Have I that. feel like I need a do-over. <laughs> Chew on that Yours a little bit. Yours was way better than mine. Uh, yeah, and that was a creepy, scary, weird moment on the Approximate Podcast. Hope you like it. Um, Orion, drag us out. <laughs> hmm. That was creepy as fuck, dog. Mm -hmm. That was some messed up shit right there. Normally I would read this, but my head's shaking. <laughs>
See this? As steady as a rock, but this is the hand I got to hold the paper with. Well, a good thing that's your jerk off hand because that's you. <laughs> Double the pleasure. That's works. A, that's a works good one. Every time. Every time. Thanks for watching. We post new content weekly, so look forward to new episodes um, at the beginning of the week. If you like what you see, like, mm -hmm. share, subscribe. And never be afraid to comment. Just use the little comment section at the bottom. Oh. Hey, guys, we also have a phone line. Uh, it's 817-673-3704. We call that the burner line. Uh, leave us a message, send us a text, and we'll address it on the show. So, yeah. that's what